in this tutorial I'm going to be going over how to create this reflection kind of material using Fresnel and also two different texture maps so that gives us an illusion of it being blurred um, so here you can see the actual color or the texture um, gets less when it gets to the side of it as well as it gets less blurred and that's kind of the kind of thing you want with Fresnel and this is also correct because down here as well with a normal technique if you did Fresnel you wouldn't get any on the surface but as you can see when we look at this from an angle we get it here if we look at it from the top um, we don't get it so much anymore so if you do it in normal technique you would you would not get this you would just get the uh, on objects like this but you want to get on the floor so this is why we want to use this technique so let's go ahead and get into it all right so what we're going to go ahead and do is change this from blender render to blender game and we're going to go ahead and of course change this to glsl and to textured mode so now you can see that it's actually displaying in the viewport so i'm going to go ahead and delete this and then i'm going to go shift a and i'm going to add a uv sphere and i'm going to go alt g to get that to the center I'm going to go ahead and move this up and this is going to be our object we are going to test it on as well as we're going to have a flat um, plane we're going to put that under now the reason we have this is we want to make sure that it's working correctly on this flat uh, plane as well as this uh, sphere so we're going to also click sh uh, smooth shading by going T smooth shading we're going to also going to go ahead and click and drag this across we're going to change this to from 3d view to the node editor now we're going to go ahead and click on this here this is going to take us to the material nodes we're going to click new we're going to click use nodes and you can see we have two nodes here so we're going to click new here and what this is going to do is it's just going to um make it look like a normal material but here as you can see since this material nodes plug in different stuff into these slots and get different outputs so first of all I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this over here um, the reason I'm doing this is I just want to be able to uh, see that it's working correctly easily without um, you know getting interference from the lighting calculations that go on on this note so what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go shift a and we're actually going to stop there because we don't want to we don't want to go ahead and do that we're going to go ahead and come to cycles cycles render now you might be thinking why are we going to cycles render well the reason we're going to cycles render is we're going to steal some nodes from cycles render now um i don't think a lot of people know this but you can actually steal certain nodes so shift a i can steal stuff like um the texture coordinates shift a again to open this menu and i can steal geometry now we're going to use be using both of these nodes as well as i'm going to go ahead and go shift a input and this is a really cool one you can see we can steal the fresnel or fresh fresnel or however you say it you can go ahead and steal this from cycles as well and we can go back to blend game so what you see here is by default in cycles if we were to plug this into here we would get it showing up but you can see uh, it's not showing up here oh no never mind it doesn't work i mean it works but it doesn't seem to work well the great thing about this is we can just go ahead and go in here and we can just go grab this plug this into normal and as you can see now it's showing up correctly and it's showing up around there now to make sure this is showing up correctly we can go ahead and go into edit mode grab the center of this we can also go into um, this mode. What is it called? Um, the I've forgotten what it's called, but this little icon here. You click on this and you open it up and you enable that, and it will. You can kind of move the vertices, and it will affect the ones around it. So if we go in back into edit mode, you can see, yep, it's affecting it there. So let's go Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. And that will just undo it all right so we know it's working so we're going to go ahead and grab this plane we're going to select um our material last so our object last you can do this for multiple objects if you like so select the one that has material last go control l and this is going to make 
link so this means it's just going to copy the material onto that plane so we're going to click materials and as you can see it's showing up so you can see here look at that um, we have this mask so by default if we go just stay here up top we look at it like straight on we're getting the normal Fresnel look but if we go ahead and come down as you can see the more we look at the surface um, directly like opposite to the surface oh, I'm just playing this real bad but as you can see it's giving us the fray now look and it's working in real time in the blender game engine right so one thing to note is once you've done this you and you're using it, these nodes you cannot use a normal shift a um, geometry you can't use a normal node from the normal blender game engine or blend internal nodes you have to use these nodes through all of them um, the reason for that is if we use a color mix node and we go ahead and say this is going to be mixing this and then we would have plug in some textures and they were coming out of in, in here if we go input geometry and they're coming out of this node and this was you using the UV of this node um, then you'll get strange updates so let's see if I can show you what I mean so if we go ahead and plug these in together as you can see suddenly it goes all dark and it's not working correctly but if I delete this node as you can see it updates correctly so you've got to make sure you use these cycles input nodes if you want to steal nodes from cycles so make sure you use only these nodes but as you can see it actually has some really nice things as well as just the normal ones so you're going to probably want to prefer to use these when you do use them anyway all right so hopefully that made sense all right so what we want to go ahead and do is we want to kind of fake the look of a kind of a reflection and then a blurred reflection so if we go ahead and just disconnect this because we don't need this right now it's just going to be a mask used for later if we go ahead and go shift a input texture and then you want to go ahead and get yourself a texture now you can uh, take a photo or whatever you like um, or you can get one offline basically you want to get a version a normal version so you're going to go new and you're going to open you're going to find the texture and then you also want to go ahead and put it into GIMP and blur it. Now I'm not going to go over how to do that because that's pretty basic or you can go Photoshop as well. Um, so if you don't know how to do that, there's plenty of tutorials online how to blur textures and stuff. So you just want to have two different ones, a non-blurred one and a blurred one. So you're going to go ahead and get those now. Alright, so as you can see I've got my first one here, it's not blurred. And I'm going to go ahead and open my second one. So new, open. Now you can see I have a blurred one here. Now I would consider not blurring it too much if you blur it too much then it looks a little bit weird when you mix them together but now that we have those you can just call um um just going to go ahead and leave the names to say no i'm going to call this r for reflection i'm going to call this r underscore b for reflection of blurred all right so i'm going to go ahead and duplicate this texture node down and I'm going to go ahead and select the first one. So this is just the normal reflection. And then we're going to select the second one, the blurred reflection. Now, you could use the normal or anything like that. But since we're using the cycles nodes, it has some really nice inputs. And one of those inputs we can use is this reflection. So if we go ahead and plug this into the, just the normal one, and we plug this into the output, Look at that, we've already got nice kind of reflections. And I mean, they're not perfect. You can use different kinds if you like. You can also just go ahead and go Shift A, Vector, Mapping. And we could go ahead and rotate this. So let's say 90, um, maybe minus 90, minus 90. And now you can see we have some nicer looking reflections. Um, I believe you can actually use an environment map and it will map it a bit nicer. Uh, I think you use this setting here or it's incoming. I can't remember, but you can do that if you like. But in this tutorial, we're not going to be going into how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just plug this into here as well. 
Now if I go ahead and move this out and go Shift A, Color, Mix RGB, and we go ahead and plug these in. As you can see, when I change this slider, it doesn't look the best. It's almost like it's got bloom or something, like you're playing bloom. But for what we'll need, you're not really going to notice it too much. So we're just going to go ahead and use this. Uh, it's not the best, but it should work fine. So now that we've done that, what you can do is I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way and I'm going to click here. We're going to go ahead and use this Fresnel and plug this in. So what you see here is it hasn't really made any difference. Except on the sides. Here you can see that they are blurred. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. But this is wrong. We want it to be the other way around. So what we can go ahead and do is just grab this. And we can plug this into here. Now the reason we do this is when it gets closer to the edges. What it's going to go ahead and do. Is it's going to make it. Um, more of a sharp of a reflection and by doing that it makes it kind of represent what kind of happens in the real world I mean this is not exactly physically accurate um, what we're doing here but it's pretty close so as you can see it's getting the, blue, uh, the reflection is getting less when it gets to to the corners so that's great that's what we want so what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to do another thing so let's say we want to mix our material with this what we're going to go ahead and do is go shift a color and then we're going to plug this in and so sorry rgb mix so shift a color rgb mix now that we've done that we're going to go ahead and grab this plug this into here and you can see it's made it white around the edge of it but we don't want that because it's I believe it's supposed to be more reflective to the edge and kind of less reflective not to the edge so we're going to go ahead and flip this around and now you can see this is white so let's go ahead and change this to a cooler color so if we change this to red change this to a nice that's not red uh, it doesn't have to be red but as you can see here now look at this it um gives us this nice effect of kind of a glossy surface or as well as this could be used in conjunction in conjunction with um, other types of things and kind of turning this down to actually create something a bit cooler but as you can see it's working and if we want to go ahead and plug a material into here as well what we're going to need to go ahead and do is we're going to need to go ahead and use the UV from one of these nodes. Remember we can't use input geometry from the normal one. We have to use a cycles uh, input node for all of them. So they all have to be cycles input nodes. Alright. So what we're going to go ahead and do is go shift A input texture. Now when I say input mo nodes I only mean these ones which give you like te texture coordinates I'm pretty sure. There might be a problem with a few other ones but I haven't come across it yet. So we can easily still use this texture node here. So we're going to go plug this in. And yep, so I was just making sure that was actually a cycles node. So we're going to go ahead and open the material. We're going to get rid of these. And as you can see, it hasn't changed this because this was on the material and that would have created problems later. So you want to make sure you have no textures on this material or it will just cancel out all the work we're doing here. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and open up texture. So new, open. So as you can see here, I've got a tile texture here. So I'm going to open this and I'm going to select that. You can use whatever texture you have and I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the color. Now you can see it's changed the color, but it's still not correct. Why? Um, the, the normal thing, it's because we haven't enabled mapping. So we're going to click... Um, tab U and we're going to unwrap and we're going to reset and that's just unwrapped it normally so we're going to go ahead and drag this up open this out and as you can see it's just mapped this whole face across the object so I'm going to scale this up all right and here I'm just going to go U Ah, uh, smart UV project. It's not going to look the best, but it will work for what we need. 
see, as you can see here, it is also mapping correctly to the texture. But as you can see here, this is a basic setup. So let's go ahead and actually see this working. So right now on the material, you can see that we've got this and you're like, what's that? Well, we're gonna go ahead and just click remove this. So now we just have a normal material. Let's delete this. We're gonna go ahead and plug this in here. And you can see it's it's working. It's still a bit ugly, so we're gonna go ahead and change this to a sun lamp. We're gonna go ahead and kind of rotate this to about here. We're gonna go ahead and delete this. R or G, move this up. And we're gonna go ahead and rotate this. Alright, and we're gonna go ahead and change this to a kind of a blue colour. I'm going to change this to 0.3. So that looks okay. All right. So you can put a light under here as well if you want to make it a bit nicer, but I'm going to leave this. Um, what you can also go ahead and do is if you really want to, it's not necessary, you can grab this output of the Fresnel and plug this into the specular. That should mean that as you can see only shows up on the edges really depends on what you're trying to achieve I do think that looks kind of nice as well as you can change the hardness and depending on your material or you could have this all set up to do that but this is just the basic setup on kind of showing you how to do a nice reflective object myself I think it looks kind of cool when you just delete this and you kind of have like a car, car paint material Think it kind of looks like a car paint material so that's how the basics of how you set it up um this is going to be the end of the end of the tutorial and it's been a long one so there we go that is how you create a kind of nice reflective material and yeah so have a great week keep blending and make something cool other than that have a great week